we're going to attempt to make this pear tree look a lot better. I have been pruning it for about eight years now. It's a semi-dwarf. It's a five in one, which means there's five varieties in the one tree. And I'm pruning it as an espalier, espalier, espinosa. How in the heck do you say that? We're gonna go with espliar because that's the way it's spelled and that's the way I've been saying it, which is wrong, I know. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take most of the branches that go straight up and we're gonna knock them down. Those are not what I want. And we have branches going horizontally and I had to do it to what they had set up the grafting of the different varieties. So the tree didn't really, it's kind of all wonky here. So getting it trained along this fence and along the wire here, I've got three wires running and getting it to do that is, uh, has been quite a chore. It has its own mind how it wants to grow and you've got to convince it that that's not the best way. So we will be leaving a lot of the horizontal facing branches. We're also going to prune it for length. Because next to it I have an apple tree and the other direction is my rose bush. So I'm not doing this to get a mass production. I'm doing it to get better quality of fruit. I am also not pruning it traditionally like a, a normal pear tree would be, where you want the center all opened up and everything. With these being just individual branches coming out, then it's pretty much already opened. Anything that's crossing, you know, I'll obviously cut that off. Um, dead or dying this tree doesn't have any dead stuff in it so that won't be an issue but we're just gonna prune it see if we can make it better and keep the five different varieties of pears coming on also speaking of the five different kinds of pears they have the varieties on here to where sometime in early august they start ripening and each variety ripens at a separate time. So when the first one starts, it's just a matter of eating pears the rest of the summer. So let's get into this and see what kind of pruning we can do here. So first off, this one here, it's headed towards the sidewalk and we don't want that. So I'm gonna cut it back here. And you can you can prune pretty good on these. It the they're pretty forgiving. The length on this one is getting a little long. You probably can't see it, but it is. at the end and I'm going to go towards the middle here. I, I, whenever I prune, I try to not take too much at first. I might prune like the grapes. I'll probably prune those five or six times. But I'll, I'll go through and get all the bad ones off, just like I'm doing here. Get everything that's facing up, I'll take off. I'll leave a couple, it just, a lot of the smaller ones I'll take off, but it, it will help in the plant, which is a tree, not a plant. So it seems to work very well for this thing, it gets, seems to be pretty happy. <laughs> Let's 
take a couple of cuts there. So like on this one here, I will cut it right there. There's a nice couple of buds here, and they're kind of going out, so I will leave those. I'll take this little piece here off, because there's a bud here that's going out. And same with this one. There was one bud that was going up, which I don't want. And this one here is growing back into itself, so I'm going to take it off. This one's coming up, so I'm going to take it off. Even though this one's up, like I said earlier, it does have one that's coming out off to the side. This one comes off to the side, and right where it starts to bend up, it has a sprout here that's going down and towards me out. So that one will probably keep coming straight out. So that's, that's how we're adjusting these. This one here is growing into itself. But I've got one under it here that's growing kind of down that will work its way back up towards the sunlight. That one's growing up. We'll take it off. And as you can see, I'm just kind of working my way around a little bit. I may not cut them all off. And I might. This one's working back in on itself. So it will come off. All right. This one, another one working in. This one's going up at a pretty good clip here. I've got a bud right here that's facing me. So I'm gonna take it there. And this one I'm taking off because it's growing straight up and right up to the middle of the plant. So that's not going to do us any good. This is kind of the way I just keep I just keep moving around like this. And last year we had a lot of pears on the ground here. I mean, they were ripening and falling before I could get to them. So... Some of them, if I'm not quite sure, I, I'll leave them. Come back to them later. You know, it doesn't have to be done all in five seconds here. I may come back out in the next couple of days and go, wow, I missed that one, and I'll just burn it off. Overall, this, this one will probably take somewhere around a half hour to do it, to prune it. I will not let anything grow taller than the post. That way I can reach it about six, six and a half feet tall. And there'll be plenty of fruit on here for what we need. Now, if we're going to be doing some canning, then we'll get other fruit. But for the most part, this is for eating fresh. And I love fresh fruit right off the tree. And that's pretty much what all this is for. We don't, uh, normally other than the grapes, we don't can the fruit because these are such small trees. But if you had a regular orchard, you definitely could can what you have. I have a sister-in-law that also has a pear tree, so and it's a big old one. So we actually do take some of hers and we will can them. So I'd like to know how you guys do it. How do you prune your fruit trees? Or does anybody else do this type of pruning? The espliar, or whatever it's called. <laughs> so.
some people think I'm uh, a little bit crazy about how I pronounce it, but I do a lot of words that way that I can't figure out the proper way to say it. I just make fun of it, and then everybody gets to laugh a little, not just me. So you can kind of see some of this is coming to shape here. right now I'm in the way you can't see it get out of the way so there's a little bit it it's not perfect by any means and kind of in my book this doesn't have to be perfect mother nature and all of its plants has a way of taking care of itself and I have no doubt that this pear tree will do the same thing this year. If you guys see something that you know I might possibly be doing wrong in your eyes, yeah, you know, I'm always open for constructive criticism. Try not to be rude. do the outside of my property first and then I will move to the inside most of this tree is on the outside so we'll go with that I'm getting a little too tall We'll leave this one though. I will try to take it down to where it's facing out, like so. And then next year we'll look at it to see, you know, maybe we ought, maybe we do want to take the whole thing out. But for this year, I don't want to. Twice a week I go in and do my cardio bit at the hospital. And all that is basically is uh, getting on their equipment and doing some exercises. My thought on that also is uh, if I'm going to have an a heart attack from exercising the hospital is probably a pretty good place to have one <laughs> and now uh, some people don't think that's funny but you know what you also got to laugh even if it's at yourself Okay, you can kind of see how it's getting a little bit better shape to it. And again, I'm not saying that I won't be back out here in a week doing more. There's no rule against that.
However, at a certain time of the year, you want to make sure you're not doing any more. Where I do it is some of these are too tall. I will give them a second snip so they all fit in here into my little gardening bucket, which believe it or not is probably a 20 gallon nursery pot. But who says you can't use those as a bucket? Better than a five gallon bucket. Under this tree, I have strawberry plants and with this tree growing like it is this direction most of these strawberry plants under it are going to get plenty of sunlight to uh, produce good strawberries now these are hoods which are grown in Oregon they are uh, very good strawberries very sweet my favorite strawberry in the world. I know California has a very sweet one too. I've tasted them before. But I still prefer my hoods. They've just always been a very good strawberry. I actually grew up picking strawberries and they were hooked. We have a small town near us here, believe it or not. The name of the town is Kansas City. And Kansas City grows hoods. Of course, that's no longer a thing around here because child labor laws and stuff. But love me some good hoods. Sun's going to be going down here pretty soon, so that's affecting my light. Getting a little darker out. Okay. I think we're going to call that good for the pruning part.